Shaving in, haven't I? Theatrical bloody boarding houses. It's like a menagerie out there. How do you mean? Performing seals in the bath again, isn't it? That's two mornings on the trot, then. I'll tell you this, Nigel, we'll have better digs than this in Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Yeah, Las Vegas. Glittering rhinestone of the Western Hemisphere. Where day becomes night and night day in one endless round of exotic pleasure. <laughs> come fly with me. Come fly, come fly. <laughs> Yeah, Las Vegas, Nigel. You can ask for egg and chips and large gin at four in the morning. Nobody turns there. The women have all had the tits lifted. You can stand your beer. <laughs> I tell you what we'll have, Nigel. We will have an electric blue Cadillac, power steering, air conditioning, quadraphonic sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one of them things that shoots out the dashboard and shoves a great cigar in your gob. You know, <laughs> I should probably have a white silk tuxedo. You could also have a revolving bow, Mr. Foskett. Yeah, a what? A revolving bow. My dad used to have one when he was uh, the two Heppelwhites and Maurice. Yeah, he used to run off a battery under his arm. Fascinating. I should probably adopt a two-pair, Nigel. Yeah, thick ginger ale, possibly, with just a hint of grey at the temples. <laughs> American women go mad for mature ginger Englishmen, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a two-pay capital of the world, Las Vegas. Is it really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They've got methods of sticking on wigs out there that have been tested by astronauts. <laughs> Do you know, Nigel, I have heard it on very good authority that Frank Sinatra's wig is guaranteed to stay on throughout a major nuclear attack. Yeah, that love big sexy women running the fingers, right? Uh, and we have separate beds in Las Vegas. Separate beds? Nigel! <laughs> we will take the Imperial Suite at Caesar's Palace, eight-foot circular bed, yeah. Private steam room, all sweet gym, and a sunken bath you can skate on if the weather turns nippy. <laughs> I tell you what we'll have, Nigel, we'll have one of them dumb waiters, you know, none of this smuggling birds up the public lift. No, 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 just pull the rope by the fireplace, and before you can say Hugh Hefner, the plane mates of the month will be whizzing up the shaft like clay bloody pigeons. <laughs> yeah, we might even be able to get tea in bed of a morning. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have shouted, Mr. Foskett. You've started off seeing your Monty's operatic poodles. Oh, oh, they'll be in a bathroom next. Do you know old Monty he clips them over the sink? Yeah, yeah, it was all clogged up again yesterday. Yeah. The drain, full of curls. Yeah, I'm afraid one of the little, one of the little tribulations of showbiz is that, Nigel. It's what gives it its special flavour. Yeah, also parrot doings on my shower cap. <laughs> Leave it out, Nigel, leave it out. Well, why do we have to live in a theatrical boarding house? Well, why do you think? Glamour? Romance? The smell of the grease paint? No, not in your Nelly. No, we are here, Nigel. Because a theatrical fleet pit is the only place where two blokes can share a single bed with a lot of embarrassing questions, you know. <laughs> what sort of embarrassing questions? Doesn't matter, Nigel. <laughs> anyway, we shan't be here for very much longer. We are poised on the threshold. We shan't be shedding our ablutions with yodeling bloody dogs and seals for very much longer. No, no, no. In a few months' time, Nigel, all America will be at our feet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think I'm ready yet, Mr. Foskett? I mean, hmm? for Las Vegas? Well, I'll give it a week or two. You know, I'd like to see how you shape up Stepney Bars next Tuesday before I start lashing out on the visas. <laughs> but you're building up a nice little record, Nigel. Very nice bit of form, you know, a bit of following, you know, just a bit of support. Very nice. Just keep it up, like Well, I've lost all four fights, Mr. Foskett. I wouldn't call that form exactly. Consistent, though, isn't it? <laughs> Wait, you should have let me beat that Belgian midget up Oxton. I, mean, I had him in an arm lock. It was only a matter of giving his bonds a little tweak. I mean, you shouldn't have chucked in the sponge. Ah, Joe. Well, sorry for speaking out of turn, Mr. Foskett, but... Well, I've never been fitter in my life. Oh, God, I hope you haven't been training on the side again, have you? Hey, weights, running, diet, all that cobblers. Because if I thought you was embarking on a... on a, on a what's the name, a training programme, I should take it very amiss, Nigel, very amiss indeed. I should, in all probability, have to write a letter to your mummy, couched in the strongest possible terms, pointing out where the four quid a week I keep sending and might very well find itself drying up. Oh, she wants me to do well and all. Well, of course she does, and of course she does. I mean, what mummy does not dream of a little boy setting her up in a nice little bungo Alicia, eh? Third of an acre, authentic fish bomb, 25-inch colour telly on Jacobean legs so she can watch him arrive in a deep throat and refusing to confirm rumours regarding Brit Eklund. Of course. <laughs> I mean, what mummy does not dream of an elegant, stimulated rabbit stove, fabulous fortnights on the famous York and Riviera with private beach at half a bottle of sparkling wine with evening meal plus croutons in the soup. Yes, of course. All this can be yours, Nigel, if... You let your Uncle Sidney play your cards, right? All right? Yeah. 
Anyway, it's all in my contact, isn't it? And I shouldn't like to see you end a promising career wrestling child molesters in Brixton for the governor's birthday treat. <laughs> Shall we consider the matter closing? Ah, breakfast. Huh? Let's see what poison Mrs. Ratbag's serving up today. <laughs> Keep it in, keep it in, very good. <laughs> we can't take the uh, wardrobe in the ring with us, no, Nigel. You'll have to improvise that bit. Very good. Very nice stag you got there. Oh. Very good. Mr. Foskey, I think yeah, I've done. Come on, hurry up, otherwise, senior Motley's poodles will be having first lick of your bacon. Come on. Mr. Foskey, what? I, I want to do number ones. Oh, so why do you always wait till we're going out of breakfast? Come on, hurry up. That's not me. Oh, got somebody in there now. Hey, look, Nigel. Now, remember, when we get down to that dining room, be careful of them two Nancy boys, all right? Oh, what do you mean? Well, just keep your hand on your apron, that's all. <laughs> do you mean Brian and Adrian? Oh, it's Brian and Adrian, is it? Uh -huh. Well, Adrian's knitting me a little woolly hat with a pom-pom on the top. Ah, yeah. is he? He said he always wanted to have a son. Uh -huh. Did he say whose? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll kick this door, it'll be all right. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, my poor little rat. She's been sick again. Huh? Aren't you? Pitiful. All over the floor. I think she got at the toothpaste whilst I was picking my feet. <laughs> You've got to look after them every minute. They're like children. I think it's, uh, I think it's letting them stay in your hat all day that does it. Let them out for a second and they go mad. Go straight to their stomach. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, the lab's all yours. I cleaned up most of it. <laughs> I, I, I think I'll leave it for today, Mr. Foskett. <laughs> You're not a bad judge. <laughs> oh, cooey! Oh, oh, morning, Brian. Yeah. Morning, Adrian. Hey, morning, hey, Adrian. Adrian. Would you mind telling Nanook to the north there to keep this bloody thing out of the bathroom anymore? Let him shave somewhere else, all right? <laughs> Get in the gecker. Sab will think the bathroom and he's safe going to check. Well, exactly. As long as he does, then. Here, try that for size. You're not going to get many bookings with him. Yeah, over here, over oh. here. Oh. No, 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 we're over here. Come oh, that's reserved for the great Manzini, still filling the stage with flags. <laughs> I've kept these two for you. All right, yeah. all right, Nigel, go on. Hey, hey, now remember what I told you about these two, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Started already, see? <laughs> oh, bye-bye, oh, Georgina. Yeah. God bless. Yeah. Have a nice day to zoo. I see Larry is yet again casting a new production of Coriolanus. I've always thought it a great pity there is no butler in Coriolanus. I should very much enjoy summertime in Stratford. The public houses, as I understand it, tend to fill up with blonde Swedish hikers. No. You only do butlers, then? Oh, but he wasn't only butlers. You weren't always butlers, were you, Adrian? Very true, Brian. For some years, I was maid. <laughs> You see, during the war, long before your time, of course, Nigel, mm -hmm. there was a great shortage of female juveniles with good thighs. They were all in the land army, I believe. I saw my chance, did I not? Uh, but you took it and all. <laughs> I was, I think I may say, a commanding maid. Will there be anything else, oh, sir? Oh, lovers. They sat in enthralled, Nigel. I had my calves not thickened with the maturity that comes to all men. I should be in the fishnet still. Oh, thank you very much. Not before time, Arthur. Right. Hey, hey, just a minute, Nigel. Just a minute. No, you don't. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, the poor wee cherub. Poor oh, wee cherub? Where do you think this poor wee cherub would be without me, eh? I'm like a father to him. It wasn't for me to be shoving in all this rubbish inside himself. And I ruin his nice young constitution. Clogging up his nice veins with cholesterol, putting on pounds of unwanted fat. Well, no. I ought to eat something, Mr. Foskett. I ought to be getting my strength up. I ought to be getting your strength. Have any more strength? It wouldn't be safe to let you in the ring. I'd lose my license. Oh, no. oh we've probably got seven years for manslaughter. Feel his muscles. Uh -huh. oh. That's enough, that's enough. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have said that. God, he's sleek. Yeah. Oh, firm rather than sleek, Adrian. <laughs> firm, but with a wonderful, yeah. ooh, how shall I put it, uh, elasticity. <laughs> I was firm once. <coughs> oh, but never elastic. <laughs> Even your best friends couldn't have called you elastic, Adrian. I was like a Greek god, Brian. Oh, Greek waiter, more like. Come on, Brian, come on, I don't want to brew. She's fighting Tuesday, all right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, but Tuesday? Yeah. But oughtn't she to be out, uh, jumping up and down, whatever it is they do? You know, skipping and punching uh, balls or whatever it is. Oh, you bloody star. <laughs> I'm starving, Mr. Foskett. Oh, get, 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 get out and <coughs> nice string of water. Go on, sluice you out a treat. Yeah, and when you've done that, have a nice slow walk round the block, all right? Yeah? And leave them errands alone. 
<laughs> you seem determined that he should go on losing, Sydney. It is beyond oh. me. It is beyond Brian, too. Mm. Well, of course it is. Forty years bogus domestic service in village halls. I shouldn't think there was much there wasn't beyond you, do. <laughs> no, no, no. Nigel is a perfect loser. No, no. When he's getting a paste, in there flocking to see him. Anyway, when he's lying flat on his back on the canvas, he is lying on a gold mine. Oh, it's so sad <laughs> that that poor wee soul should be billed as an international failure. I mean, is there no way you could add a touch of glamour to his image, Sidney? How do you mean? Well, a hint of romantic inadequacy. Uh. As it were, Napoleon retreating from Moscow. Yeah, 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 I see, yeah. We could cut a slit in his vest, stick his hand inside, that might do it. <laughs> there is Captain Scott. Uh. He could come down the aisle, drawn by a team of huskies in a sled. Uh, yeah. Mush, mush! Oh. <laughs> in furs. Oh, he'd look stunning in white fox. Uh, <laughs> trimmed with new trap. Why? New trap from the fox. <laughs> you did it, no, I am bloody Rockefeller. <laughs> oh, you know what my suggestion would be, Sidney. I've got a good idea. <laughs> no flatterer. <laughs> My suggestion would be that you take Nigel down to a really first-class theatrical costumier's. Bruce! Oh, I've got him coming in here. <laughs> Tell the bride. An idiot! Sent you huh? with our love. Oh, I'm sure he'll whip something wonderful out of his bag. Sure he will. <laughs> Especially for Nigel. Let the wee lamb try on a few fripperies, uh -huh. and before you know where you are, woo! Whoosh! It might all come together. Yeah, right, right, right. Nice, Adrian. I think it's a marvellous idea, Brian. Yeah. And we could both help, couldn't we? I mean, we could hold things. Yeah, any hold will be done. I'll do that. Thanks very much. Very kind of you. Yeah, right. Oh, wait, sorry. Well, Bruce, you say? Bruce, yes. Yeah, see what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> He's been doing that every morning for the past nine years. It's never got a laugh yet. Oh, but one day it might. He's got to keep on trying, Adrian. Yeah. That's what this business is all about, Brian. Uh, quarter past ten. Time you two girls were down the labour exchange, didn't it? Come on. <gasps> My God, he's right. I must change. <laughs> the image. We're trying to, uh, uh, to... Br Bruce, isn't it? Yeah. Bruce, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the image we're trying to project internationally, you see, Bruce, is your instantly recognisable pitiful failure. Do you follow me? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. the costume he's trying on, that'll project that right away. Right, right, fine. Well, well, we'll see what it's like. Yeah. You ready, Nigel? Yeah? Ah. <laughs> yeah, that's your, that's your King, uh, what's his name, isn't it? Harold. Harold, yeah, yeah. He makes a marvellous King Harold, you yeah. see. He's got the presence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Regal, but thick. Yeah. How's it feel, Nigel? Well, I can't wrestle with this thing in me eye, Mr. No, Foskett. No. And his armour, it's too heavy. I'll shorten the sleeves. Well, it wouldn't half slow me down. Yeah. Slow you down? Ah, good. This might be just the thing we're looking for, then. Mind you, it has got other advantages. Yeah, what's that? Well, I couldn't get picked up and chucked out of the ring or nothing. No, that's true. <laughs> and if I fell on my opponent... You'd probably crush him to death. That's useless. Get it off. All right. Try the other one. Yeah, try the other one, Nigel. <laughs> You're it. No. Oh, it's actually Charlie Chaplin, isn't it? You got that, did yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. could wear that anywhere as a failure. Yeah, Chaplin spotted that straight off. Yeah, of course. To be really pitiful, he'll have to work on Charlie's waddle. Yeah. Come in the ring, waddle about no, a bit. You know, very no, touching. No, 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 no. It's not exactly Las Vegas, is it? I mean, we're looking for a, for a career image, something lasting. Last you know what I mean? I want to be heavyweight champion you know, of the world, Mr. Foskett. I mean, what is I it? mean, what technical what is it? Stand over there. Now. What, we're, what we're looking for, you see? I mean, I mean, have you got anything a bit more upmarket? You know, as you say in the trade, a bit more stylish. Upmarket, yeah, stylish. Yeah. Yes, yes. I could probably do him an Edwardian sailor suit with Titanic written across the back. That's pretty pitiful. Definitely not, no. Or I could lay my hands on a big tutu. I'm sure you could. No, no. Send him out as the dying swan. Dying swan? It's not exactly your Stepney bars, is it? I mean, it's a bit delicate with her taste, wouldn't you say? Stick a beak on him. Stick a what on him? Sticking a beak on him would probably bring him down market. Beak? Nice speak. Hey. Have you got any more bright ideas? <laughs> Go for the overkill effect. Uh, how do you mean the overkill? What do you mean overkill? Overkill. Effect? Make him the talking point. Give him the bowler hat and the beak and stick an arrow in his eye. Anyone else say that's the way he was found when he come off the Titanic? <laughs> Should go down well. What do you think? Hey. I don't think we're doing much good here, Nigel. <laughs> me and this gentleman do not seem to be on the same wavelength. He does not seem to me to be someone versed in the complex subtleties of the noble art. In fact, if I had to sum him up succinctly, the word that springs to mind would be Pratt. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, you 
pedal a bit faster, Mr. Foskett. I'm supposed to be training. I'm supposed to be getting fit. Fit? I'll give you a bloody fit. Eat your chips. Let me worry about the training. Got a lifetime of experience. Best routine in the world. Chips, slow walk, chips, nice hot bath, chips, bit of telly. You ask anyone. Jack Dempsey, Mohammed Ali, anyone. Well, I'll finish me chips, Mr. Foskett. Then eat your bread pudding. Well, I'll finish that as well. I wouldn't mind, only you haven't put on one ounce of unsightly fat. Well, I'm sorry. Chips, bread, pudding, you never stop eating. It's like owning bloody Arkle. <laughs> it's costing me a fortune, you realise that, don't you, Nigel? Forty pen of the best chips, it's not even half past bloody six yet. <laughs> Still. Right, I'll fix you. See if he's got anything greasy over here. Come on, Nigel. Oh, this is the place, Nigel. <laughs> oh, this is perfect. I think we've fallen on our feet here. Sit down there. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <coughs> you eat here, do you? What? I, I say, I say this place, I don't blame you most. <laughs> this looks very promising. <laughs> Tell me, what do, you, uh, what do you fry your chips in? In me bleeding vest, where do you... <laughs> Of course, I've had an own Egan Roney was coming in this morning and put me tails on, wouldn't I? <laughs> Egan Roney, very good, very droll. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stand around here all day indulging in the idle banter and chit chat of Cabbie Society. I wish I could. Give us a cup of tea and a double portion of chips, would you, Squire? Double chips? Yeah. Well, well. It's not very often we get people on expense accounts. <laughs> you wouldn't like half a fried egg to go with it, would you? <laughs> or a couple of baked beans. Oh, he's got a million of them. <laughs> Like you like two straws with that, oh, would you? Oh, it's cabaret time, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea we'd wander into Quaglino's. <laughs> Double chips! Double chips! There yeah. <laughs> He'd be strolling amongst us with his violin in a minute. <laughs> Any requests? <laughs> you two aren't here for your silver wedding, buddy, John, so he's a damn man <laughs> at the anniversary walls. <laughs> One luxury chips. Thank you very much. There you are, Nigel. Get stuck into those. I'll slow you down a bit. There, then. What are you going to hook? <laughs> hey, Nigel, I got this place wrong. No, 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 no. It is a veritable treasure trove <laughs> of culinary delight and invention. Listen to this. <laughs> you can have here, you can have... <laughs> you can have lamb chops, C-H-O-P-E-S, very good. Kiddly pie, yeah, you can have steam and kiddly pie. <laughs> Mice pudding, yeah, that's worth a few children. <laughs> oh, look at Tony Soap, how's that? I say, while you're here, my good man, I'll have a double portion of that with a magnum of the 47 sarsens. <laughs> <laughs> I see you finished. Yeah? What? I see you'd like to pay your bill. Yeah, all right, Squire, all right, all right. Now, Nigel, come on, you finished those chips, uh, Yeah, I've had enough, thank you, Mr. Foskett. All right, here you are. How much is that, then? 70p. Right, uh, 70p? 10p the tea. What? 50p the double chips. Plus V and T. 50p the chips, just... 25p a, a portion. Wait a... Fit to, look, ex, hang on here, wait a minute. Look, you've got a, you've got a rack here. Here, look here. Look, you've got eggs, eggs, uh, bacon, sausage, chips, 90p, right? Eggs and bacon, 60p. Therefore, your sausage and chips... Didn't have any sausage. Oh, never mind, I had those. You just keep that sausage in your head, mate. That's your unknown fact of your sausage. <laughs> sausage and chips, 30p. Remember that? Sausage, chips... 30p. Remember, what else have we got here? Eggs, sausage, peas and chips, 75p. Eggs, peas and chips, 60p. So, your sausage, what did I tell you to keep in your head? Your sausage. Right. Your sausage is 15p. Carry that 15 over here. Sausage and chips, 30. Sausage, 15. Therefore, your chips are... 15p. Top of the class. 15p <laughs> your chips. 30p a double portion. All right, any argument? Yeah, but I'll make that 20p a sausage. No, 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 15p. A... Anyway, we never had no sausages, did we? Oh, no, I've got your point. <laughs> no, 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 15p. No, your sausage was your unknown factor, wasn't it? Your sausage was your eggs. Eggs? <laughs> Not eggs. No eggs. Eggs, you deaf bird. You're no, no, no. forgetting to carry the bacon. Forget it, to carry the bacon. You should divide the eggs by the beans and carry the bacon. It comes out of 15p a sausage. Well, no, it comes out of 15p a sausage. No, if you do that, he's giving no, no, away no, his baked beans. He's right. right. Well, well, that's his fault. Oh, he's giving away his baked beans. No, you've got eggs, bacon, sausage. You've got to divide your... You're dividing your bacon by your beans instead of multiplying your, ah, your yes, eggs by your bacon. Uh, no, you're making the same mistake Franny Craddock here, mate. No, no, no. 70p! No! Here, here, Squire, here. 40p, top whack. Take it or leave it, all right? You forget I've got a choice, sunshine. Oh, here, here, here. Don't worry, Mr. Come here. Don't you
I've done good to know Mr. Foskett. I've done all right, eh? Seven different positions, possibly eight, three decisions. Oh, I mean, it wasn't all best, best, was it, Mr. Foskett? There was a lot of style there, no? I mean, a lot of planning. And, I mean, there was three of them, Mr. Foskett, you must admit that. I mean, now you can see why I reckon I might be ready to go in the ring and, and win something for a change, Mr. Foskett, eh? I mean, you've got to admit that, haven't you, Mr. Foskett? You told me you wasn't fit. I'm not very I'm going to take you out of that bleeding circus, build you up in something, try and make a star of it. This is what you're doing. You're doing press-ups behind me back, no, aren't you? No, no, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrounging steaks off them two Nancy boys. That Mrs. Watson names, I just wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Letting them rub on liniment in exchange for a handful of luncheon vouchers. Is that what you're up to? <laughs> Am I nurturing the Judas in me bosom, eh? No, I haven't done that. Is this how you... Skipping in the lap of a morning, is that what it's come down to? I mean, is this how you repay my confidence? My, my unstinting effort? My, uh... My, um, my what's the name? My, what is that bloody word? Faith, faith? I mean, I offer you Las Vegas, Nigel. I, have you forgotten about Las Vegas? Hey, I mean, I give you Madison Square Garden on a plate, and all you, a plate, a platter, a silver platter, and all you can do is exchange the old bloody thing for a punch up in a ball's pond road. Well, if that's how you want it, Nigel, all right, fair enough with me, boy. Why, oh, it's nice. Winning something for a change. Oh, yeah. Hey, you! Oh, oh my God, hey, Nigel, come on. Go, <laughs> go! <laughs> Come on, Nigel. Where you going? I'm going for a proper run. Will you stop that? about things, Sid. No, isn't he? Uh, I trust it has been pointed out to my illiterate protege. I've dropped all reference to international failure from this area. A great and popular competitor, we thing from Kaffa. <laughs> he says he's embarrassed. Oh, is he? Oh, dear me. Oh, how appalling. How shall I live with my, what's name, conscience? And... In a blue collar! Just remind him he came with an ace of stepping out there and a pair of frilly picnickers and a beak. Just remind him of that, would you? That up and coming formerly international failure, the 54 Orlando! <laughs> Music. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. Right, all back to my place. <laughs> 